Fresh Baked, if you are planning a trip to the Disney Resort in May or are thinking about planning a trip to the Disney Resort in May, this is the planning guide for you. We'll tell you what to expect with regards to the crowds, the weather, what to pack, what rides are closed, what events are happening. All this and more coming up next on Fresh Baked. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, with Bell. That's new. Well, it's not new. It's something that they used to do, but they haven't done for a long time. That's my recollection, anyway. So, welcome back, Bell. Uh, so, May, May at the Disneyland Resort. It's the last month before you know the the, the the proper summer season. But the good news is, is that you're not getting any of that summer weather. A lot of people think it's the beginning of the hot weather at uh, at in Southern California, but you usually don't get that until maybe July or August. So it's pretty temperate here at Disneyland in the month of May. Matter of fact, the weather that we're experiencing right now, which is a beautiful 72 degrees, clear and sunny with barely any clouds or wind, that's what you should expect in May of 2023. At present, there are just uh, a couple days of, of possible rain, though even if you do get them, it's gonna be light rain. You're not gonna get any terrific storms or anything like that. Uh, when it does rain, it's usually light during the month of May. Typical weather, you're looking at temperatures in the low to mid 70s, very rarely ever getting anywhere near 80 or anything like that. Having said that, you still want to pack some layers. You want to be able to dress in layers because it does get chilly here in the early mornings or in the evenings. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, so bring light layers. You don't have to bring a heavy jacket or anything like that, but you know, a windbreaker or something of that sort. Personally, I'm a fan of bringing a long sleeve t-shirt and then a t-shirt, pack the long sleeve in your backpack or whatever, and then put that on at night underneath your t-shirt. That's my preferred way of accounting for all kinds of weather. I would say pack the umbrella just in case and do pack your sunscreen. You're gonna start needing that sunscreen here in the month of May, as it is gonna be you know, quite sunny, quite bright on most hours of the day. Let's talk next about crowds as we approach Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Just like the weather, the crowds that you're seeing today through the lens right now is fairly indicative of what you'll find here in the month of May at the Disneyland Resort. During this time of year, the, the, the crowds are, are pretty standard. They're pretty consistent, actually. About as consistent as you'll get for, for most of the year. And that is to say that it's neither a, a very slow time, nor is it a super bonkers busy time like you might see during you know, the Halloween holidays or the Christmas holidays even though I'm having some difficulty <laughs> negotiating the bridge at the moment. That's because everybody's getting their pictures. Uh, but you don't see the crowds get too low, nor do you see them get too high. And it's usually always generally in that same, uh, in that same crowd level, medium, medium plus. You can even go back to previous years. Last year looked just like this. Previous years, 2016, 18, 19, what have you. It's pretty consistent. Like right now, as we move our way through Fantasyland, this is par. This is standard. Expect just what you see here in May. Uh, wait times are generally gonna be, you know, less than an hour for most attractions. Uh, we, I haven't looked at the tip board yet for today, but the only attractions that are gonna get up there and wait times are gonna be a Space Mountain and a Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which we're gonna be talking about some more here in a little bit. Uh, but you know, a ride like Big Thunder or the Matterhorn, Big Thunder is gonna be about 45, probably typically, typical wait time for the Matterhorn. That's been going up, but look for upwards of an hour at the Matterhorn. I actually check that. <laughs> the Matterhorn is gonna be closed in, in May. I'm very sorry. We'll talk about more of that coming up in a little bit as well. Standard Tomorrowland, standard Adventureland. Indies closed, also standard. Standard Frontierland and, and so on. So that's crowds and weather. What about ride closures? Well, Big Thunder's closed right behind me, uh, but it's gonna be reopening this month in April. It will be open in May. Over in Adventureland, the Adventureland Treehouse. I'm expecting this to be closed for the entire month of May. We have no date. The calendar is still showing it closed through the month of May, or at least as far into May as we can see at the moment. Though so you can see, obviously, that they have made very quick progress on the Treehouse, or at least to us anyway, to our eyes, almost all of the scaffolding has been removed, so I would expect that this is gonna be open soon. Not sure if it's gonna be open in May as of yet, as we mentioned, 
We can only see up until the 14th right now on the refurb calendar. Over in New Orleans Square, definitely do expect the French market, AKA Tiana's Palace to be closed for the entire month of May. They've only just begun this update. So we're gonna be, this is gonna be down probably for another four or five months at least. Unfortunately, the Matterhorn will be closed in May. And unfortunately, I do believe it's gonna be closed for the entire month of May. As of now, the return date is to be determined, but my expectation is, is this is gonna be a months long closure. So look for this to be closed May and probably June as well. Splash Mountain, still going strong. Not closed, won't be closed in May. We still don't know when they're gonna close this attraction. My best guess is June at the moment. If you're a Star Wars fan, May is your month. Lots to do here, obviously, at, at the Disneyland Resort during the month of May. You've got Star Wars Day, Star Wars Nights, and, well, heck, they're just gonna go Star Wars Month. Star Wars Day is May the 4th, and they do celebrate here at Galaxy's Edge, Tomorrowland as well. Definitely gonna be some food, which we're gonna get to in a minute, but there's also gonna be, typically, there is like a whole lightsaber thing that they do, a gathering of Star Wars fans down by the Millennium Falcon. Everybody breaks out their lightsabers. It's kind of awesome, actually. I've attended a few of these, and it's pretty great. Meanwhile, Star Wars Nights, May 2nd, May 4th, May 8th, and May 11th. These are hard ticket events, separate from your standard Disneyland or Disney Park admission. So if you're gonna be in the parks on one of those days during May and you're not going to Star Wars Night, understand, know in advance, that you have to leave the park by 8 p.m. They clear the park at 8 p.m. of all non-event ticket holders. But the good news is, is that there's plenty to do besides Star Wars Nights for you Star Wars fans who don't want to or are unable to attend one of the special you know, Star Wars Nights. Star Wars Month lasts for the whole month and it's both here in Galaxy's Edge and in Tomorrowland. And by that I mean there's going to be specialty food, uh, specialty merchandise, etc. Throughout, throughout both lands for the entire month of May. As a matter of fact, I think there's going to be some some merchandise specific to Star Wars Day. Uh, I believe it's being sold already on Shop Disney, but it's supposed to be in the parks by the time Star Wars Day rolls around in May. So be on the lookout for that Star Wars Day merchandise. Disney hasn't yet released a, a foodie guide for our Star Wars Day, nights, or, or month as of yet. Although the you should expect the foods to be different for Star Wars Night than they are for Star Wars Month. There are specialty items for only those Star Wars nights. Uh, but we can look back at the 2022 foodie guide and hope that we see, there's some really good items in, that I saw last year. There's the five blossom bread at Oga's Cantina. <laughs> there's the chocolate chip sweet sand cookie at the Blue Milk Stand, which is interesting if only because this is the only time of year basically they sell food of any kind here. Normally it's just blue or green milk. And while you're there at the Blue Milk Stand, you might be able to pick up the Moncala Swirl. It's a, it's a twist on the, the blue milk, they put like a, well, I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's just bright shimmery swirl that they put on top. Give it a shot. And perhaps my favorite of all of them is the, the Mustafar Parfait at the Galactic Grill in Tomorrowland. <laughs> it's literally a lava cake, which I find just absolutely sublime. It's genius. As a matter of fact, while you're in Tomorrowland, stop by Space Mountain, which will become Hyper Space Mountain. Disney has confirmed that they are going to bring that back this year. Know before you go though, this will be a competitive attraction. In years past, I've tried to ride Hyperspace Mountain standbys where you know an hour to two hours, lightning lanes are sold out. Uh, so you know, plan ahead a little bit if you are interested in taking on Hyperspace Mountain. Do plan ahead a little bit. <laughs> Don't approach it casually. That is to say, mostly on Star Wars Day. Uh, if Star Wars Nights, you ain't got to worry about it. Star Wars Nights, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to ride. Star Wars Day. Very competitive. Same thing, actually, for Galactic Grill. I do your mobile orders, plan ahead on your mobile orders for Galactic Grill, but throughout the rest of the month, you'll probably have a little bit less competition for those specialty foods and for Hyperspace Mountain. Don't forget, by the way, that Single Rider has returned to Space Mountain. Watch our video, uh, our What's New video on that topic. I'll put a link below. It'll discuss how you can take advantage of Single Rider, and that does obviously apply to Hyperspace Mountain. By the way, I cannot forget the Wookiee Cookie at the Grand California Hotel. They have that seasonal thing over there, the same place where they do the, the displays, which by the way, they're doing a Star Wars themed 
display, I think again this year, it's a Millennium Falcon. It's cake. It's a giant cake thing. Anyway, check out or go try the Wookiee Cookie at the Grand Californian Hotel uh, in the lobby. What else is going on in the month of May? Well, uh, May is obviously Mother's Day. Uh, now, they don't celebrate per se here at Disneyland. Uh, they never have really, but if you are happening to be here for Mother's Day, there's a few things you can do to help celebrate that with your mother. Uh, there are the, the character breakfasts are awesome. Storytellers Cafe at uh, Grand Californian, uh, Goofy's Kitchen at down or at the Disneyland Hotel, uh, and then obviously Minnie's Breakfast at the Carnation Cafe. Those are great. Uh, they do have, I think they're going to be having, uh, or they typically do have treats at the uh, or at the Grand California Hotel as well, in the same place where they would have, they're going to have the Wookie Cookie. And then uh, I, I would say look for treats at uh, Marceline's perhaps. That's, that's one good option. Also, there is Memorial Day coming up in May. If you're wondering if it's going to be busy that day, yes, <laughs> yes it will. Typically, actual holidays are traditionally very busy at the Dis uh, Disneyland Resort which is the opposite of some conventional thinking. Memorial Day will be very busy. Like Mother's Day, though, they don't do a lot of celebrating. A little One event that I would recommend for Memorial Day is the flag retreat ceremony. They do this every day throughout the entire year, but they make a little special effort on Memorial Day. Uh, it's just got a little bit more, I don't know, feeling to it, I guess. Uh, it is, it's also, if you're interested in going, very competitive. The, the seating here at the at Town Square is difficult to come by. You gotta plan ahead. I'm thinking, I mean, if you wanna sit, at least an hour probably, uh, but you know, just know that it's gonna be very tight, very compact, and it's gonna be difficult to see from certain areas. Uh, they do move the benches around a little bit, and they do allow for seating. You know, they, they rope areas off that are specific for that show. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna try to catch the flag retreat ceremony on Memorial Day, plan ahead a little bit. May is also the month of Cinco de Mayo. Disney does not, there's no planned celebrations or anything like that here uh, in the park or even in downtown Disney. There are, however, uh, plans for, I think, I believe, they have in the past, uh, Asian American, Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander month is in May. That's nationwide. Uh, in the past, Disney has done some events in some Mark Twain. <laughs> Smoke's definitely yelling at me. Uh, they have in the past done some events here at the parks to celebrate that a month long deal. Kind of like what they do for Lunar New Year, except it's all in downtown Disney. There isn't anything in the park specifically. Also, obviously, you've got the Disney 100. That's going to be going on all year. People are still celebrating that. That's uh, a lot of your themed event food will be here for the 100. And then your nighttime entertainment. Uh, Fantasmic is still running, I think, believe, I believe weekdays or weekends only at 9 and 10.30. Wondrous Journeys, the new fireworks show. That's showing nightly. However, it's projections only during the week, Monday through Thursday, and then fireworks uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That show is at 9.30 night. Uh, parades, Magic Happens, running daily, 3.30 and 6.30 p.m. And then World of Color 1 at DCA. The schedule, the calendar shows it three times nightly, 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., I should say, 11 p.m. and 12.45 a.m. Although I do believe, I'm fairly certain that that 12.45 show is part of the uh, grad night. That's not a usual or regular thing. The park's obviously closed by 10 p.m. most nights. And with that, last thing I want to talk about is park availability. I, this is something that I pay attention to closely. I have been for a long time, ever since we started going to the reservation system. Things have softened up recently, but it's, it's still, we're still not all the way there where you can pretty much go wherever you want. Taking a look at the calendar now in May, single day tickets are fully available for the time of May. However, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, you may not want to wait. Because if we look at the April calendar, we can see that there's almost a whole week right now sold out. So they're still clamping down, they're still restricting capacity here, they're still limiting ticket sales. Uh, so you want to get you want to get them at least, I would say a month early if you can. Uh, unless you're a local and you just, you just want to show up. But if you're planning ahead, try to buy your tickets about a month in advance. If you have a magic key, things are also just as difficult there. Uh, you can get reservations for today and tomorrow right now, which is weird in April. But, and then, but looking forward into May, 
some of those days are already starting to sell out now as well. So uh, if you have a magic key, but you're planning, you know, a trip, if you're out of town, as we continue uh, our start journey, looking at those dates now. So you have the room. And oh my God, I can't believe I almost just went a whole video, an entire video without talking about Toontown. We're here now. Toontown is open. Toontown is very popular. It has been since they've opened it. However, on this Saturday afternoon, things appear to be chilling out just a little bit. Uh, it's not nearly as packed as it has been uh, the first couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, I just walked by uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway hey. Railway. The standby wait time was 30 minutes. It's, what, four in the afternoon on a Saturday. So that's pretty surprising. I was expecting things to, to be a little bit more packed. So if you are coming to Disneyland in May and you have designs on seeing Toontown, you could, you could expect the things to be a little bit more normal as opposed to abnormal, as opposed to super hectic and busy and scary and I don't want to go in there. I, I think you can feel free, feel confident to come to Toontown and enjoy things, get in a couple rides, get some of the food. I would still suggest though, if you're looking at some of the uh, Toontown merchandise, they sell out quickly. As the product arrives in the stores, uh, it's usually gone pretty quickly. So make that the first thing you do. If you get to the, get to the land, if you're here in the morning, arrive in the morning, stop first at the, at the uh, engineer souvenirs, do your shopping, and then make your way around the park or around, around Toontown. All right here, this is a good indicator. Every time I've been to Toontown, this lane right here, this sidewalk has been full of people trying to get to Good Boy Grocers to get the uh, picnic basket or the uh, slushies. You can walk right up now and get one. So that's great. That's a good sign. It's still very popular. It's still busy, still crowded. Uh, but it's, it, it's at least not as nuts as it was before. Well, I'll check that out. When I walked by, it said 30. I came back. Now it says 60, which I disagree with because there's no extended queue out here. The extended queue is a 60-minute queue. If it's inside the doors, uh, you're looking at 45 tops. So once they get all these guests out here in there, which they can fit them all, they're looking at a 45 minute wait. By the way, if you want to impress your friends at Bigfoot Lookout, Bigfoot is here. The trap is there, but Bigfoot is nearby. If you listen carefully, been hiding out that whole time right next to the Bigfoot trap. What a sneaky, sly little Bigfoot. As we leave to in town, I will update you again real quick on the crowd situation. I was just talking to a cast member. He says, today, today is the first day that it's actually looked like this, that the, that the mayhem has been continuing. Hi guys. Uh, the mayhem has been continuing right up until yesterday. And he said, today, this, this weirdly, oddly on the Saturday uh, is the first time that it hasn't been you know, completely bonkers. So perhaps uh, there's still, you know, mayhem to, to continue here. I'm not sure. But hopefully by the time May gets here, you will find something closer to this than what we saw, you know, when, it, when the land first opened. And so concludes our planning guide for the Disney Resort, the month of May, 2023. One of the best times of the year to visit Disneyland. Great weather medium-sized crowds, uh, minimal ride closures, plus you've got the 100th, two towns open. It's great. It's a great time to be at the Disneyland Resort. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you are participating in, uh, in, in these planning guides with us, let us know in the comments below if there's a certain segment of the operation that you would like us to cover that we, you want or need more information on, and we'll try to fit that into the future episodes. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. I'm going to take you guys out with the Disneyland Band and the Depper Dance on their way to the flag retreat ceremony. Good afternoon, everyone. We proudly invite you to gather in Town Square as together we celebrate America.